chest diagnostic. Hello everybody and welcome to position 18 for my complete chess endgames course. Today we are on the pawn breakthroughs basically. So the last two positions in this king and pawn series are going to have a lot more pawns than we've seen in the simple positions. And that's because pawn breakthroughs involve an, an insane amount of calculation. You need to calculate sometimes 20, even 30 moves ahead, and that can be very difficult. So if you want to pause the video, I'd encourage you to try to work out this position or even just evaluate it of who's winning and who's losing, or if it's a draw. So with white to move or black to move, white has a winning pawn breakthrough. So it doesn't really matter who's to move, white will win either way if he plays the correct moves. So if, if it's white to move, of course he'll play king to f4, gaining the opposition and forcing black to choose among four moves here. So black can play king to e7, king to f7, g6, or g5 check. And we'll start off with the most logical, which is g6 for black. He wants to just trade white's pawn, which is sitting on the outskirts and it's quite dangerous. But of course, white needs to choose the correct h6. Now this is a little difficult to find because after g5, black is going to move over and take the h6 pawn. And there's pretty much one winning move here for white. He could play g4, but with king to e3, that ensures that black will be kept out from the queen side pawn formation. And once black heads over, he's too far to prevent white from enacting his pawn breakthrough. So let's look at the line here. After king to g6, white plays a4. Black can take the pawn, and now he's a pawn up, but he's too far away on the outskirts here on h6. And if you want to try to guess the move, I'd encourage you to try to solve it, but it starts with c5. Now, if black takes with the d-pawn, we play a5. So you can see we're giving up almost all of our pawns, and now we play d6, and we can quickly evaluate with the rule of the square that black can't enter the square and we win by one move. Now after a2, queen to b6 check, we're gonna pick up all these pawns and we'll be a queen up. So a very difficult position to calculate. And this pawn breakthrough, we'll go back here. This happens in all the lines eventually. Now if, so you can see from this pawn formation, there's a pawn breakthrough with c5. Now if we play c5 and we take with the c pawn, then we just simply play a5 and there's no way for black to prevent white from just moving the a pawn forward. <clears throat> All right, let's go back to the initial position here. After king to f4, if we see g5, then actually white can just play g4 and we get the opposite. We don't even need to use a pawn breakthrough because black has to step away from his pawn. We take that pawn and now we're going to be queening the H pawn. So if the black king just tries to take all of white's pawns, it still doesn't matter because we're actually in a better position. We have more pawns, we've already queened and there's nothing black can do. <clears throat> so moving the pawns is not a solution. Now after king to f4, if black moves back, then we just move in to this position. Black will try to keep us out using the opposition, but after king to g5 and king to f8, we just simply move up to g6. We wait until black has moved further. And then actually the most accurate is a3, but it doesn't really matter the, t the uh, specific move because after a4, we get the same position and we're gonna get the same pawn breakthrough. Now, black is in dire straits because he has to stay protecting this pawn, otherwise we'll just take it and then move our h pawn, but we're threatening the pawn breakthrough from this formation and there's nothing black can do. So we plays king to g8, we just start with c5 
And if D takes, we play A5, getting the same position. Now notice that black actually can come over after we play d7, he'll play king d7. But after king to or king takes g7, it looks like black may be able to get his pawns in. But again, we're going to go through an insane calculation here. So with a4, black wants to queen with check. But if we calculate it out, h6, a3, h7, now black is one move away from queening. But we have this desperado check queening immediately, which draws the king to the eighth rank. And now once we check here, if the king moves here, then the queen will just simply prevent this black's last hope from queening and if he moves here to c7 uh, then we just simply check and we fork both the king and the pawn so that was a 17 move long variation in order to win this position but it, it still involved the same pawn breakthrough that we saw on the other side so whether black moves back or whether he moves his pawn, white playing the correct moves after king to f4 is able to use his pawn breakthrough to give up almost all his pawns and get a queen. So really the main concepts in this position is a pawn breakthrough and timing. In king upon endings, timing is the most important factor because even if you're down tons of material, if you're able to win the queening race then you'll win the game so if you have any questions about this specific position or about any specific lines that you'd analyze just leave it below in the comments i thank you for watching and i'll see you in position 19. hey everybody thanks for watching hope you enjoyed this video uh, hit the like button leave a comment and subscribe for future videos see you in the future